What's the plan? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Hey everyone and welcome back to What's the Plan, the podcast where we dive into the matters of our careers in the architecture and urban planning field. I'm Haley. And I'm Andrea. So Haley, what's the plan this week? This week's plan is all about angular planes. Mm -hmm. So this week's episode topic has been quite the hot topic in my office Mm -hmm. the past few weeks. Um, In particular, an article that was published on the CBC website um, discussing why the age of the Mayan Pyramid Tower could (laughs) could be coming to the end in Toronto. Yeah, that article's been floating around my office too. Mm-hmm. And let me just say, it's been a relief for us to hear that this requirement could be gone soon. Mm-hmm. And specifically with this article, it refers to the angular planes as a wedding cake description. Mm-hmm. And honestly, I love that because <laughs> I love anything that can be viewed in various ways. Like food? <laughs> yes, honestly. If it can be related to food, uh-huh. I'm all for it. Um... But before we get into what the article talks about, Mm -hmm. why don't you tell us a little bit about what angular planes are? Yeah, so dictionary definition, Mm -hmm. angular planes are an imaginary flat surface that projects over a lot and at an inclined angle measuring up from the horizontal. So that sounds a little bit confusing. Yeah. Let's let's actually look what it means in the built environment. Okay. So, and the angular plane is an imaginary angle Mm -hmm. that delineates the maximum bulk and height of a building. So, this typically, this angle could be at 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. However, this may vary city to city and depending on the size of the building. Okay. And the rationale behind all of this is to preserve a certain amount of sunlight on the sidewalk opposite to the building, Mm -hmm. uh, specifically five hours per day between the spring and fall equinoxes. Right. So when you have, say, like, from the you measure this from the front of the lot, you have an angle that dictates the building height. You don't have, like, a huge tower right in front of the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. And then another reason for why angular planes are used um, is that is to pre- preserve sky views. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now that we know what angular planes are, what is Toronto's policy on angular planes and... Uh, when it came about and why were they implemented? So angular plane provisions came into practice in the city of Toronto, May 2010, through okay. the avenues and mid-rise building study. Mm-hmm. And so the objective of this study was to encourage the development of mid-rise buildings on avenues within the city of Toronto, mm-hmm. because it was believed that mid-rise buildings were the most appropriate development for the growth that was predicted to happen on these Toronto avenues. Okay. And, I mean, as we both know, it's quite apparent <laughs> that high-rise buildings, especially 10 years ago, yeah. were highly unwanted. And so because of that, mid-rise buildings seem to be the best option mm-hmm. to accommodate the growth in the city. Makes sense. Yeah. And so within the study, there is a set of performance standards set out for mid-rise buildings, mm-hmm. one of which focuses on sunlight, as you mentioned earlier, yeah. on sidewalks and angular planes. And so in order to achieve the five hours of sunlight on sidewalks, Mm -hmm. a 41 degree angular plane taken from the opposite street line Mm -hmm. should be applied to buildings fronting onto the south, east, and west sides of an avenue. Okay. Yeah, and so this standard was determined given that there are buildings as high as the right of way width Mm -hmm. of the avenue, so the upper stories of buildings need to be masked to provide the maximum of the five hours of sunlight on the opposite sidewalk Mm -hmm. and so what i just said there was a lot of words that not a lot of people might understand okay so let me break it down a little so a right of way with andrea do you have um an understanding of what that is yeah sort of but do you want to detail it further um Okay, so I think, like, in simple terms, the right-of-way width is Mm -hmm. just basically how wide a road is. So um, the right-of-way width of an avenue is how wide an avenue road is. Mm -hmm. And so what that standard I just talked about is referring to Mm -hmm. is that the upper stories of the buildings need to be masked so that when shadows are cast from the buildings, mm-hmm. they don't cover the entire right-of-way of the uh, sidewalk. Okay. And so with this performance standard, a 41 degrees was determined based on massing studies and shadow testing. Mm-hmm. 
And not only do the performance standards within the study use angular planes to maximize sunlight, mm -hmm. angular plane provisions are also used to help create the transition between deep or shallow avenue properties and abutting neighborhoods mm -hmm. to create more cohesion between the area. Wow, okay, so it definitely sounds like the city has a lot of justifications mm -hmm. for why they use angular planes. Yeah. Um, but what do you think about the anger claim requirements for mid-rise construction buildings? Okay, let me just start <laughs> off with saying that since urban design is such a large component of successful planning, mm -hmm. I do think that it's great to have a set of standards as the city, as the study outlines mm -hmm. to help maintain character and compatibility within the area. And it's especially nice that one of these focuses is to increase sunlight mm -hmm. but i definitely think that the foundation of these requirements are dated yeah like i mentioned the study was published in 2010 yeah so the provisions are based on research and consultations that were done over a decade ago mm -hmm. when the pressing issues and concerns within the development industry were so very different from the mm -hmm. issues that we're facing today yeah. And so with that said, I think that they should definitely be re-evaluated to reflect solutions for issues that are currently affecting the city. Yeah, so I totally agree with you with mm -hmm. what you just said. Um, at first glance, like this planning policy seems like a great initiative as mm -hmm. it takes in mind like the human experience at street level. Exactly. Um, like from natural light and scale of buildings. But I think we mentioned in like a previous episode that like sometimes shadows aren't bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially when it's like a hot summery day in the city and there's yes. not a lot of like trees on the street. Mm -hmm. Shadows are a great way for people to like get some relief from the heat. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, however, I think also the flaws actually outweigh the benefits, mm -hmm. at least a, from a current standpoint. Um, some of the lots are actually too shallow to reach the full height of the right of way. Right. Um, therefore, buildings on such lot are not able to even reach an ideal density required mm -hmm. for mid-rise buildings. Mm -hmm. um, also, they make for very inefficient, like, carbon-intensive buildings, mm -hmm. as having to, like, step back at every level voids a lot of space that could be used. Um, yeah for living spaces mm -hmm. and then furthermore it kind of like voids the ability to have a typical floor plan okay, which yeah. makes construction so much easier for like um, mid to high rise buildings mm -hmm. and like i think that's the reason why many like architecture professors um they revere like boxy designs okay um especially like when we're like doing studio projects they'll be like why do you have curves there <laughs> it's just so inefficient and mm -hmm. like now i kind of understand for sure. Um, yeah, but like in total, I think it just feeds into like less room for housing. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like this is one of the issues that I personally think the city should be focusing on more mm -hmm. instead of preserving sunlight and maximizing mm -hmm. sunlight. Of course, it's a good consideration, Yeah. but it's definitely not the most pressing and given today's climate, it shouldn't be the main focus. Yeah, yeah no, the other problem I have with it is that mm -hmm. like, all your buildings end up looking very similar because yeah. every building needs to be stepped back a certain mm -hmm. distance, certain height. So it's like every building basically looks the same. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to know that we're not alone in this viewpoint and the mm -hmm. way that we see it because many people in the architecture and planning industry are calling for the end of the angular plane policy. Yeah, so the CBC article that we mentioned earlier called Why the Age of the Mind Pyramid Could Be Coming to an End in Toronto, it outlines the possibility for city council to accept recommendations done by a Danford study, um, a look at planning one of um, one of Toronto's most recognizable streets or major avenues as well, mm -hmm. and to help address the city's affordable housing crisis. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's the, that's the biggie. Yeah. Yeah, so this recommendation is to abolish the 45 degree angular plane requirement as it creates fewer, uh, smaller, oh, sorry, fewer smaller units that are more ex expensive to build and a cost that gets passed down onto the consumers. Yes, because if it's more expensive to build, of uh -huh. course it's going to be more expensive to own yeah. and to, to afford. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the study further recommends allowing developers to actually build more units in a building of the same height with an eight-story limit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So instead of like having each, I guess each floor has a certain height restriction, it's mm -hmm. like the overall building just has an eight-story limit. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And one of the outspoken critics of the Mayan pyramids, mm. uh, or as he calls them, wedding cakes. <laughs> I love that. The nickname you love. Um, Mark Richardson, the technical lead for Housing Now Toronto, mm -hmm. a data and advocacy organization, says that if we have a housing crisis, yeah. we're going to need to be willing to upset the neighbors. Totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, like, but more importantly, the guidelines were um, crafted with no comprehension or care mm -hmm. for the impacts it would have on affordable housing, accessible housing, family sized units, and um, to placate local groups in like single family mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. And, like, as well, um, as we all know by now, yeah. Haley and I are not a huge fan of NIMBYs, and so who vote against policy just for the sake of protecting their house value. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark believes this is the reason why we have Angler Plains. Okay. Mm -hmm. So similar to what I mentioned earlier about not having like typical floors, mm -hmm. uh, Nama, hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right, Blonder, an architect and urban planner at a Toronto firm called Smart Density, uh, further states that the wedding cake structures, it's more like custom build rather than like having like an apartment or a typical floor, mm -hmm. which presents more work and room for error on a project. Okay. Yeah, so not only does that increase like your cost, but also increases time. Mm -hmm. And time is money, as we all know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So fortunately for us, Anna Balau, a deputy mayor and chair of Council's Planning and Housing Committee, agrees mm -hmm. with the criticism. And um, she says that the policy was created to strike a balance, mm -hmm. but she understands that like it's become clear that the city needs to re-examine what um, is their values, what are their like actually hoping to achieve because yeah. it's interfering with building more housing. Mm -hmm. So, we shall see what comes about it. If any, but uh, any thoughts on that? I definitely agree with what Deputy Mayor Anna Bailao said. Mm -hmm. I think she, honestly, I don't think I could have put it in any better words. Yeah. She voiced it very well mm -hmm. in that it was created in a time where it made sense, mm -hmm. but given what we're facing today, yeah. it's just, it doesn't fit anymore. Uh -huh. And it's okay for change, yeah. and you know what, sometimes it's needed, mm -hmm. and I think that's where we should stand. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to also change your opinions. Exactly, you know you learn, mm -hmm. you understand, and then you grow from it, mm -hmm. and there's no shame in that, you know? Yeah. It's actually a sign of intelligence <laughs> and yes. growth. Yes. <laughs> To always keep reevaluating what you know given the context. Yeah. But yeah, that also like makes me wonder, it's like, what if we never had this angular plane requirement 10 years ago? Like, would we be <laughs> in a housing crisis now? Oh, you know what? That is a good question. Uh-huh. I, <laughs> I feel like, maybe this is pessimistic of me, yeah. but I feel like we still would be. I see. It's just, there would have been other reasons for it because as you mentioned earlier, um, angular planes, one of the possibilities for them was because of the NIMBYs and to satisfy the NIMBYs. Mm -hmm. And so I think if the angular plane policy wasn't created, another policy similar would have been created uh -huh. as to not upset the NIMBYs and uh -huh. those who are against the high-rise yes. development. I see. Understandable. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I totally, I don't know, yeah, I have also mixed feelings about it too, because yeah. it's like, I don't know if not having an angler plane requirement will totally solve the housing crisis, mm, but yeah. I do wonder if, like, we won't be as a serious, like, struggle for, for it. For sure, yeah. Because, like, I don't know, there every street, every major street, you see, like, ten of these step-back, like, pyramid mm -hmm. buildings, and it's like, you're just counting how many units, like, missing. Yeah. And it's quite insane when you actually look on a larger scale. Mm hmm For sure. Mm hmm So, Haley, <laughs> what did we learn today? So, we learned that angular planes are an imaginary surface mm -hmm. that determines a building's maximum height for a minimum five hours of natural sunlight and to maintain sight lines to the sky. Mm hmm yeah, and although they started out with good intentions, mm -hmm. angular plane requirements reduce the amount of buildable, buildable livable space while costing more time and money to construct. So we shall all advocate for the end of this policy. And discussing angular planes was the plan for now. Listen to our next episode to continue figuring it out with us. Thanks for following along to this episode. If you liked it, please give us a like, review, and subscribe for more. Until then, follow us on Instagram at What's the Plan Podcast for what the next plan is.